Hi everyone, No Nonsense Boxing here. I'm here to discuss the brilliant and exciting fight between Conor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. and whether it's the right time for them to face each other. While people are quick to criticise and say, well, they should be fighting people in their own division, they're actually both unable to get the big fights at the moment for one reason or another, and especially the world title shots. Starting with Chris Eubank Jr., he's actually top three in three of the world governing bodies, including number one with the WBA. However, as a fan of Eubank Jr., it's been quite frustrating to see him not able to get the biggest fights in his career at this moment in time, and as he is in, as he is in his prime. But I've just got the vibe from his promoter that the world title shots at 160 have been unable to be achieved, and it's just bad timing for Eubank in the middleweight division, it seems. Firstly, GGG, who was tied up with the Murata fight that got rescheduled, is now facing Canelo at 168, and he has two of the belts. And one of them is the WBA, which Eubank is number one in. Then there's Demetrius Andrade, who is the WBA holder at 160. But who knows what's going on with him at the moment. You know, he was supposed to go up to 168 to fight Zach Parker for the interim WBO title. But that didn't happen. And now, funnily enough, he's actually called out Chris Eubank Jr. after they're in deep talks with Conor Ben. And yeah, he's never been able to get a fight with Andrade. Then there's Jamal Charlo, whose career's been a bit of a mess since the Devramenchenko fight. He fought Montiel. He was scheduled to fight Solecki. But now, nothing's happening with him at the moment. You know, he was chasing the Canelo fight for a while. And actually, with Eubank, he actually signed with Showtime and PBC um, in 2019, before the COVID-19 pandemic. And he fought Korobov, and he got the WBA interim title. And the plan actually was to fight Charlo in the future, he said in an interview before, but this never happened because of COVID. And you know, these are just reasons altogether that make up why Eubank hasn't been able to get the big fights at 160, but there's those that don't like him who scrutinise him more and say maybe he just doesn't want to fight the top guys, he's scared of them. And this actually comes from um, a quote from GGG back in 2016 when they were supposed to fight and said that Eubank actually lost his pen uh, when they were supposed to fight as he wasn't signing the contract. Moving on to Conor Ben, he's actually steadily moved through the rankings at 147 in his career without actually fighting the top guys um, in his next fight before the Chris Eubank Jr. fight was talked about. There was talks that he was going to fight Jose Ramirez, Thurman, Broner, amongst others. But many observers didn't really see these as realistic targets because of boxing politics and people saw them as just Hearn putting out names out there just for publicity, you know, he, they weren't ever going to fight the likes of Thurman. But even though Ben hasn't really had a world-level test yet, someone that will actually hit him back with real power, he's actually top five in all four major governing bodies. And while Ben has shown how explosive he can be, the boxing public doesn't actually really know how good he is yet because he hasn't fought at that world level. And obviously with the undisputed clash between Crawford and Spence likely to happen in November... The belts Ben has positioned himself to fight for in the future will not probably be available to fight fight for in a while because Crawford and Spence will have a rematch, maybe even a trilogy. And those above him in the rankings, such as Ortiz Jr. and Boots Ennis, are viewed to be on a much higher level than Ben. And so, you know, all this considered, maybe it is the right time for Ben to take this big fight outside his weight class because Hearn's always made it clear that the goal with him is to win a world title at 147. And this may be realistic and a good opportunity for Ben through a future vacant belt as he'd be a big underdog in the eyes of many versus the likes of Crawford, Spence especially, and, you know, Ennis and Ortiz as well. So overall, although many people in, in the boxing world would have expected Eubank Ben to happen in a couple of years' time if it was ever going to happen at all, considering all the points I've made, it just might be the right time for Eubank Ben, which may be the biggest fight each fighter will ever get in their career in terms of legacy and monetary gain. And although, from a pure boxing standpoint, fights in their own division against the other top guys on the same level as them may be better, no other fight for either man would, even for a world title, would create the amount of buzz this announcement has created in the UK. And after this fight, as long as neither man is badly hurt, they can return to their respective divisions and continue with their world title goals. And you know, while this fight can be discussed and criticised that it's just a cash grab, you know, they're just trying to make money off their dad's name, Let's let's face it, this fight is absolutely massive and one people will tune into regardless of whether you like Eubank or Ben.
it's one of those fights where you won't believe it's actually happening, even when they're standing in the ring together. It's such an exciting fight on so many levels, and boxing needs them. Finally, this isn't a prediction video, but I thought I'd share my initial thoughts and feelings on the fight. Firstly, I thought it was important to note that both fighters' last fights have arguably been their most impressive performances in their career. But while Ben has showed signs that he can be brilliant and an explosive fighter, as mentioned before, it's hard to actually pinpoint the level he's on because of the lack of tough opposition. Because of this, along with the fact that Eubank is stronger, more experienced and probably ultimately a better boxer at this stage for getting any weight, based on what we've seen from both, especially since Roy Jones has trained him, I'm backing Eubank Jr. to win here, with the stock levels of Ben rising in defeat. Thanks a lot for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below of what you think about whether it's the right time for this fight to be made, and comment your prediction as well, I know this is going to be very divisive, this fight. Um, like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new, share it around if you really enjoyed it. I've been no nonsense boxing. Thanks a lot. Cheers.